So um, hi everyone, and thank you for uh, attending the session. And I think for uh, those people who attend virtually, uh, thanks for watching my session. Um, my name is Yi Hong. I'm from, from IBM. Um, I've been working on IBM about, uh, I think it should be 17 years. Um, originally, I worked on the IBM Taiwan, then I moved to IBM US. And currently, my team um, is mainly work on uh, machine learning related open source project. And uh, I've been participate uh, in the several open source community uh, since 2017, uh, starting from the Node.js and uh, TensorFlow.js and then uh, Genesis Graph. And uh, within these two years, I mainly focus on the Kubeflow community. And today I'm going to share um, the new uh, intermediate representation in the Kufo V2, and also the journey that uh, about how to make the new feature available in the Kufo pipeline with take time. Okay, so without further ado, yeah. I think let me begin with um, a very quick uh, introduction to the ML and the Kufo pipeline. But uh, I think I have just one quick question. Had any one of you heard about the Kubeflow before? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> okay, so not many people heard about, so I can, yeah, I can go a little bit slowly on the introduction part. Okay, so the, the thing I want to show here is that this is uh, uh, IBM uh, Global AI Adoption Survey, uh, actually for this year. Um, it's done by uh, 7,500 companies uh, worldwide globally. And actually, 35 of uh, the companies actually report using uh, AI in their business already. Uh, and additional 42% uh, of them say they are exploring the AI. And 30% of these um, global IT professionals um, says that uh, employees in their uh, corporations are already uh, saving time with the new AI and automation software and tools. But you can see why the adoption rate is still about one third, right? So I think the major barrier uh, based on this survey is that the first is that not many, um, they don't have enough AI skill, expert, and knowledge in their companies. That's the first thing. And the second, second is the cost of AI adoption is comparatively expensive. Uh, uh, imagine that uh, you want to have a model up and running. Actually, um, you need the whole, um, uh, ML systems, for example, including the uh, data store configuration, deployment space, serving infra, monitor, and feedback uh, mechanism. Those are uh, for just one uh, ML ecosystem. And the third is that uh, they also say they don't have enough tool or platform for the AI solutions in their companies. Uh, last but not least is actually um, the complexity of the project and data, and also the ML uh, ecosystem is actually uh, fairly uh, complicated. And when we talk about the uh, AI life cycle, we actually categorize the AI uh, procedures into these three pillars. Um, the first is the data. Um, after you define the business use case and uh, exit criteria, uh, you will start to deal with the data, including uh, data extraction, uh, analysis, and preparations. And after that, you move to the model. Um, the data scientists that will implement different uh, algorithms with the uh, prepared data you just get from the previous pillar. And then he tried to train uh, various model and evaluate the quality of the model and validate the model's performance. Then you move on to the last pillar, model serving and uh, model monitoring. So after you model on the production and running for a while, you will gather actually another set of new data, then you will iterate through uh, this cycle again and again. So here comes the ML pipeline concept. So ML uh, pipeline concept become very popular when people start to adopt the AI uh, into their uh, business. Uh, as you can see here, delivering an uh, ML model uh, comprise many, many uh, process and operations. So therefore, um, Defining uh, those tasks in a pipeline and automating the uh, execution actually can speed up the uh, business operation 
and expertise the model uh, delivery. The, uh, uh, others also actually avoid um, error from the human uh, operations. So it's good to actually uh, automate the, the whole uh, ML lifecycle as the ML pipeline. So when we talk about the ML pipeline, it actually can be a portion uh, of your ML system, and it can also be the overall end-to-end -end scenario. For example, as for the uh, ML app engineers, they actually can define uh, a superset of ML pipeline to integrate, for example, the data preparation from the data engineer, and then he can also uh, integrate the model training from the data scientist, and the, he can also integrate the model serving uh, and the monitoring from the operator engineer and the software developer and become the superset of the end-to-end -end ML pipeline. So here comes to, um, you have the ML pipeline. Definitely you need a platform to run it, being able to um, fulfill your, uh, each, each of the ML tasks. So uh, Kufo pipeline um, is actually a, a cloud native orchestration engine for building and deploying those portable and scalable ML workloads based on uh, Docker containers. So you can see here, in the Kufo pipeline, all of the ML tasks are shareable uh, components using containerized implementations. He also pr provide um, a user interface on the right-hand side here. Yeah. And allow you to manage and tracking uh, the experience, jobs, and runs. And also, we also have uh, engines uh, to scheduling multi-step ML workflow. He also provides a Python SDK and its own DSL for define, defining uh, and constructing uh, pipelines and components. Later on, we'll deep dive into the, the pipeline. And I, I, I hope that I can have time to demo uh, how you run the ML pipeline on the Kufo pipeline. Finger cross, and I hope the network should be smooth. So um, here is actually an example uh, showing how you use the Python SDK that provided by the Kufo pipeline to compose a pipeline. You can see here, you just need to simply add um, this DSL, the pipeline decorator, um, in your Python functions. This uh, decorator is import from the uh, Kufo uh, pipeline SDK. Then you can, by using this decorator, you can uh, convert this function into a ML pipeline. And inside this function, you just lay out the ML uh, operations you need to do. Uh, for example, there are several operations here. And then you also use the input and output uh, to connect the dots between uh, each operations. And on the bottom, you also see, um, you also provide the SDK, um, the compile API, then you can compile uh, that pipeline into a pipeline spec. And then you can use either uh, through the API to submit the pipeline to the uh, Kubeflow pipeline server, or you can also use the UI, which I showed earlier, um, to uh, run the pipeline layer. And behind the scene, actually, Kubeflow pipeline use Argo workflow um, as the execution uh, runtime. Argo uh, workflow is a very, um, I would say it's a very popular CI CD um, open source uh, con container native workflow engine. And then Argo implement uh, its own Kubernetes CRDs uh, called uh, workflow and uh, use uh, uh, directly uh, a cyclist graph, AKA the DAG, uh, to construct a multi step workflow and the dependency. And you can see uh, each step inside the workflow is actually an individual container definitions. And you also have a workflow controller, uh, which will monitor the workflow CR, the overall workflow CR, and also spawn uh, corresponding part for each step. And based on the DAG um, inside a workflow, he will also update the status for each step. So besides Argo, Actually, from IBM, we also integrate Tecton, the other uh, popular container native orchestration engine uh, into Kubeflow pipeline. And it's very similar to Argo's uh, workflow CRD. 
uh, Tecton also implement a set of CRD to represent uh, the pipeline. Uh, so there are several CRD uh, we introduced here, uh, including the pipeline task, here, uh, pipeline task, uh, pipeline run, and task run. Uh, a pipeline is actually contain uh, the tasks uh, to run a, a whole pipeline. And then a task is actually define a set of steps that you want to perform uh, within a part. And for the uh, pipeline run and task run, they represent a, a running status of the pipeline and task. And it will contain in the status of the execution part, uh, input, output, and final state. So here is um, a high-level architecture uh, diagram of the Cooper pipeline using Tecton. User actually start from using the uh, KFP SDK um, to, like I showed earlier, the example, uh, compile his ML pipeline. And in this case, because it's using Tecton, so the artifact that it generated from the SDK is a Tecton a pipeline YAML. And then you can either go to uh, use the uh, API or the, the UI to submit the pipeline to the Kubo pipeline API server. Then from there, um, the, pipe, the Kubo API server will dedicate um, the pipeline executions uh, to the Tecton. And meanwhile, uh, the pipelines and the metadata are stored uh, into the regional database as well as the object store. And then you can, uh, you can run the whole pipeline on either uh, Kubernetes, you can also deploy it on the OpenShift. And besides this, when you run the pipeline, on your pipeline, you can also leverage all, all sorts um, of different services um, as you need it in the pipeline. So uh, I think earlier I mentioned about the uh, metadata and artifact. So, um, since the very, very beginning, Kufo Pipeline uh, already provide the metadata and artifact tracking, uh, which are actually the fundamental requirement for enabling uh, ML apps. Uh, with uh, metadata and artifact tracking, every input and output of each step uh, in your pipeline is stored uh, in a data, data store or object store. Um, the metadata will be stored in the um, relational database and artifact that we are using the object store. So based on this information, you actually can, using the uh, metadata and artifact tracking to know, okay, which version of the data set uh, is used uh, to train your model, for example. And you can also use this kind of information to compare model training in different rounds. Yeah, like we show here, it's a little bit small, but I think I can, I can show the live demo later. And you can also carry over the state uh, from the previous models. And on top of this, you can also use the MLMD to um, do the uh, caching and speed up the ML pipeline execution. So here's just a screenshot about um, how you use the artifact tracking. It's a, just a snapshot. So when you click on that artifact, you can actually see all the information related to that artifact, including the pipeline run and where the location is stored. And the other thing is that um, there is also a uh, linkage ex explorer that you can check uh, the versions and the, the histories of the model um, you trained and also other artifacts. <coughs> So like the example here, you see uh, you can easily find uh, the pipeline name here, and you can also find um, which data set is used to train these models. So you can use this uh, linkage explorer uh, to find out the, all the information uh, related to the, that artifact inside that pipeline. So here just, uh, I hope, yeah, it's a live, uh, it's a, GIF that showing that how you use, um, how you open up a, a pipeline run and you click on the ML metadata tab, then you can see all the output 
and input for that task. And from there, you can find the artifact. When you click on the artifact, you can also um, click on the Lineage Explorer. So you can view uh, how that artifact is linked in your pipeline. So we talk about the metadata and artifact tracking. So, um, so I try to add the metadata, um, how that we implement, uh, uh, collect, and those uh, metadata and artifact inside the crypto pipeline. And here you can see we actually use a uh, asynchronous uh, agent called metadata writer. So he will collect he he will collect the information from those uh, task parts, and he will collect the input output those metadata information and store uh, into the uh, MLMD store here. It's also a relational database. And for the artifact, we actually inject um, an extra step into uh, the container. So to call, we call it copy artifact. As the last step uh, in every task, then you will um, collect those artifacts and uh, upload to the object store. But um, on the other end, TensorFlow extend, extended. They actually they also leverage the same. Um, this part is the MLMD store. They leverage the same uh, MLMD store, so we, we share the same library. But uh, the information is stored, and the way it used is actually different. And you can see the MLMD client actually here it integrate uh, actually into every step uh, or in, in the pipelines task or components. So it actually collect the MLMD synchronously, so different from uh, the way open source did. So th this is where it deviates from the Kubeflow pipeline v1, and also imply, this also implies that we actually need a better design uh, for the uh, metadata writer. So because of some restrictions, uh, which I will cover in just a bit, and uh, some hard dependency uh, to the acquisition engine in the V1, the Kubeflow community start to work on a, a better metadata-driven uh, design for the V2. So here um, is actually the main, two main goals for the Kubeflow pipeline V2. The first is to design a new uh, intermediate representation that I mentioned about in the very beginning of this meeting, and then. Um, by using that, we can compile the pipeline into this intermediate representation and use a, a metadata-driven approach to run the ML pipeline. And second, um, we try to decouple uh, the dependency from the backend runtime. Kubeflow pipeline um, can get more control, then it can get more control over the pipeline execution rather than uh, mostly rely on the specific feature of the backend engine. So let me go through the V1, and then I will compare, and I will also cover the V2. Then we can have a good comparison about what we have in the V1 and what we will have in the V2. So in the V1, you can see uh, I mentioned about the uh, MLMD um, metadata writer. So this is the um, the design for the the V1. Um, there are two components for the MLMD. Uh, the first is the MLMD service. It actually provides the CIUD operations um, to access the information that's stored in the MLMD data store. And the second is the metadata writer. I just showed you on one of our diagrams earlier. It's actually a silo process. Um, it keeps monitoring the change in the pipeline run uh, on a Kubernetes level. Then it creates the pipeline context and update the artifacts information uh, of the pipeline run and store into the MLMD service. Because it's a, a synchronous nature, so um, when the pipeline task uh, um, start, and there's no guaranteeing when uh, the task uh, data information will be stored into here. So you are not able to rely on the metadata um, on a task to get his um, uh, dependency upstream information. So in the V1, uh, we also mainly, we only uh, store uh, preliminary data uh, into the MLD 
in this case, we only store the artifact, uh, yeah, artifact uh, meta informations. So when, when we try to display a pipeline run status, we actually need to get, uh, um, in, in a pipeline UI, we need to aggregate uh, the pipeline run status from various uh, data source, including the pipeline uh, database and also the MMD service. And besides, um, the data format uh, in the data store are different. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, for the Argo, if you are using the Argo engine, it's the workflow. If you are using the Tecton, it's the pipeline. And here is the new uh, MUMD uh, design uh, in the V2. So you can see we still need the MUMD service because it's the data store is the source of truth. We store all the uh, MUMD information here. And then, but you can notice that MUMD writer is gone, that a synchronous service is gone. Right now, it directly integrates into the pipeline executions. And another key change is that we not only um, store, like I mentioned, the artifact metadata information, we actually store all the task-related information into the MMND uh, data store. And the way we store it is kind of uh, using a tree structure. So you can easily get those information from the MMD and you can reconstruct uh, the ML pipeline by using those information. So, because we, um, those changes actually um, all leverage on the, uh, help us to actually be able to, uh, for a pipeline, when you run a pipeline, you are able to leverage uh, the MLMD uh, to get the, your, like I mentioned, all the previous task that you have been run. Because uh, when you run the task and it depends on some uh, information from your previous task, it already be stored into the MLMD because once your task is done, its information is immediately stored into the MLMD. So he, here is another uh, uh, key change uh, in, in the V1, uh, in the V2. It's actually the pipeline spec. So in the pipeline spec, like I mentioned earlier, uh, in the V1, if they are using different backend, you need to use different uh, pipeline spec. Um, the upper side, if you can see, uh, it's actually for the Argo. You can see here is the workflow. And the bottom one, this one, is for the tech time. So you can see in the V1, uh, different uh, backend actually will impact how you uh, generate the pipeline spec. It's not reasonable why an uh, uh, ML developer need to care about what kind of uh, custom resource you use on the backend. So here comes the V new V2 design. So we try to, the, the whole community try to come up a new uh, intermediate representations uh, to represent the pipeline spec. So on the compiler side, SDK compiler, right now it won't generate the backend specific um, pipeline spec. Right now it's compiled this intermediate representation. We call it IR. It's the, the data structure in this uh, new uh, pipeline spec and it's also very easy to understand. understand. It's a little sl small, but I think you can still see contain uh, three major sections. The first is the component section. It defines all the components that are used uh, in the ML pipeline. And second, it has the deployment spec session. This session is actually container level detail, uh, tell you how to run that components. And last is actually a root session. That's sort of uh, the DAG information uh, to describe uh, the, the task structures. And the other new change in the V2 is that since we are using the um, new IR, so um, they also change uh, the UX to read uh, the information from this new IR, and they also have some enhancement on, on, on the UI. So on the UI, they try to uh, improve some usabilities. So for example, uh, they add this uh, breakpoint trail, help you to navigate some of the nested the DAG um, co uh, compl complex uh, pipeline. 
So you can actually zoom into a sub deck, and you can also use this break on uh, track to actually zoom out uh, to the parent deck. And again, um, I think one of the V2's goal uh, I mentioned earlier is to reduce the dependency on the backend acquisition engines. And because of the new IR and the SDK compiler, um, here is actually the, the, the new way um, that how the pipeline uh, life cycle is in the uh, V2. So it still starts with the uh, KFP, uh, DSL, and SDK. And, but the output uh, right now become the IR, and you submit the IR uh, to the Kubeflow pipeline service. And in here, you will see earlier, um, we are using uh, the approach we call the smart compiler, because compiler need to know which backend you are using. right? But in here, we call it smart runtime, because we actually add a backend compiler uh, in the backend, not the compiler. Uh, SDK. So the pipeline uh, service can leverage this backend compiler uh, to interpret uh, the IR and compile it to the backend specific uh, custom resource and then uh, kick off the back, uh, pipeline execution. So um, as you can tell, uh, because we have two different backend, so means that here we would provide two uh, uh, backend compiler. One is for Argo and one is for Tecton. And in here, um, I mentioned about the smart runtime. This is how actually we um, execute the pipeline. So in V2, uh, pipeline is actually directly, we directly uh, pass the whole uh, ML pipeline to the underlying acquisition engine. Argo or Tecton, right? But this it has, has some drawback. It's actually restricted on, first is the pipeline spec, and second is the uh, capability of the execution runtime. So for the smart runtime, we actually introduce a driver, uh, executor, and publisher mechanisms um, to uh, run the new pipeline in V2. This mechanism is designed to uh, dynamically control the pipeline execution, data passing, and better uh, MLMD integrations. So you can see from the driver's size here on the diagram, it's actually talked to the MLMD, uh, and it will retrieve the parent DAC information and create pipeline contacts, replace the placeholder in the input parameters, and then perform the caching mechanism based on the information from MLMD. And the job for the executor and publisher uh, is to uh, download the artifact if needed and run the user task inside here and then upload the artifact after it finished the user's task, task and publish the task in, uh, metadata into the MLMD, including output, input, uh, artifact, and status. Yeah. So this kind of uh, smart runtime is actually offload a lot of uh, responsibility from the acquisition engine that we are using and make the, those uh, acquisition engine is mainly responsible for um, spawn the part, tear down the part, th this kind of Kubernetes uh, part lifecycle management. And here is the, so um, when we try to create the smart runtime, actually just found out that within the cool flow, we still have a lot of component actually tied to, directly tied to the backend. Um, one extra information is that the, the whole cool flow pipeline, most of the code is written in Go. So in a Go that uh, if you are trying to use, um, for example, if you are trying to access the custom resource for uh, Tecton, you need to use the Tecton's Go package. If you want to use the SS, the Argo custom resource, you need to use um, the Argo's Go packages. So the thing he, you can see here is that we try to also create an abstract interface here. So in this case, the pipeline service won't directly um, have the dependency to, for example,
the Argos Go package or the Pipeline's Go packages. And furthermore, uh, be because of this abstract interface, if you want to support another um, CI CD engines, then you can actually just fulfill this uh, abstract inter interface, then hook into the Kubeflow pipeline system. Then you can actually run the ML pipeline on your own uh, orchestration engine. So let me go through a little bit of uh, detail about that uh, abstraction layer. Um, the change of the abstraction layer is already um, upstream to the uh, Kubeflow pipeline repository. And there are two major uh, benefits that for this kind of abstraction layer. First is that in a V1, even the front end UI and also the back end service actually, like I mentioned, are very tied to the back end um, orchestration engines. So um, when you are trying to compile the, those components, uh, at least here, you actually, if you, those components you want to run uh, against Argo, you need to compile a version that's specific for Argo. If you are want to run these uh, component uh, with the uh, Tecton backend, you need to compile a specific version of that binary and run with the Tecton. But in the V2, because the front end side, we, right now we are using the IR. So the logic to rendering the front end pipeline run and status are pretty much the same. And for the back end, because of this abstract layer, um, those components I list here, right now they, not, they are not directly tied to the Go package for the specific back end engine. Right now they are using the abstract interface now. So here are the detailed um, uh, abstract interface uh, we implement uh, in a community. There are three parts. The first part is a compiler, definitely because, like I mentioned, for the smart runtime, we need a compiler to compile the um, IR into uh, backend specific format. So um, we need to have the uh, compiler API. For this API, um, the real implementation uh, for the Argo, it will compile to the workflow um, uh, custom resource. For the Tecton, you will compile into the pipeline run. And the other two is the, as we call it the execution client and execution spec. This execution client, you can see it's just a, a client that used to talk to the Coop API server to retrieve and perform those CIUD operation against the custom resource. And uh, for the execution spec, it's just a data structure actually to represent the custom resource that uh, the backend engine is using. And those are the details uh, of the execution client. And if you are familiar with the, um, using the Coop API um, to, to get those um, custom resource, um, you, you will see those API are very, very should be familiar to you. Just some, and in our interface, we just create sort of one-to-one um, -one mapping to those CIUD and list and patch master uh, from the Kubernetes API servers. Again, the, the purpose of the abstract interface is to avoid um, direct uh, Go LAMP package dependency in the Kubeflow pipeline component where uh, the custom resources are needed. So right now, you, you won't direct tie to the specific goal and packaging. Instead, you use this unified interface face. And the last but not least is the execution spec. Um, when we do the refactoring um, on those components uh, in the Kubeflow pipeline, um, those components use the custom resource. So we, we, we try to uh, minimize the change to avoid um, some regressions. Um, so we directly took those API, uh, Kubeflow pipeline component use, and merged them into the uh, execution spec. So those API you see here represent the information of the custom resource that are used and how components uh, manipulate like, the value of a custom resource. So because of the IR and the smart runtime in the back end, so actually one potential benefit along the road is the ML 
democratizations uh, for the ML pipeline. Users actually can uh, share the ML uh, task as a reusable component and using the IR format. And in, right now, community also trying to uh, publish a draft um, for defining a component registry, which is actually a set of API to help you to search, categorize, and discover uh, the uh, ML components. It's in a draft phase, um, and our team is actively joining the discussion with the community to finalize the detail. So actually, w with the uh, component register and the Kuflow Pipeline SDK, then can directly uh, load the component from the register uh, while um, you're composing the pipeline. So the ultimate goal is actually to integrate um, that kind of uh, local local tools with the, with the component register. So you can imagine that uh, right after you, ha you you have this kind of integration, you can use that drag and drop approach to actually compose um, the ML pipeline. So I think that's almost everything I want to cover. So you can actually uh, find other um, how meta data is so important and how we use the IR um, to compose the ML pipeline component and also the latest code here. And here is the URL to the Kufo pipeline and Kufo pipeline on Cape Town. And let me show you a quick demo about the E2E MNIST that you can run on the, the pipeline. Sorry, I need to find my cursor. <laughs> okay, so actually I have two systems. This system is the, um, if I remember correctly, this is run on takedown, and this is run on Argo. So if I go to the uh, one of the pipeline I just uh, upload earlier, you can see this is the new UI. So you can see those are the tasks that you define in the ML pipeline, and this is indicated as an artifact that it will generate in your pipeline. And here is actually because in order to run this pipeline, you can see it actually need uh, six minutes to finish the pipeline. So I actually can, I can see if I can run it now. So here is the parameters that you need in your pipeline. And I just started. So you, see, you can see different run um, will have the different entry. And like I mentioned, then you can compare um, the result of your different pipeline run. So let's click into here. Yeah. You can see you already finished. Yeah, but I say it needs six seconds. Oh, it needs six, uh, six minutes. But why it finish so quickly is that you can see here, uh, if you notice, it, let, let me jump it back to this one. This one is the, the one that I run, uh, I think it's this morning. It's using the check mark, yeah. And, but this one, if you can notice, is using a kind of download indicator. It means that because those input parameters are the same for this task, so the runtime engine is can tell that you can directly get a cache version to represent the output. So you don't need to run the real task again. Yeah. So those is actually get, get the, um, the cache, the version output and display here. So he can finish the pipeline run very quickly. So that's power of the MLMD data store. Yeah. So I want to show you that here is actually run on um, Argo, but when I click into here, you can see there's no different. I upload the same pipeline, but the backend is actually two different runtime engine. Yeah, so just let you know that uh, based on the work we have done, you are not able to see the backend difference. Yeah, so 
I think that's it for my session. Unfortunately, I don't have the time for questions, but it's very welcome. If you have any questions, just come to me. Yeah, we can discuss offline. Thank you.